Hey, Brett Mark kids! It's week five in our emoji prayer series, and that means we are not done, but guess what? It means we're halfway through. And today's emoji is a red face. Ooh, anger emoji. Oh no, ooh. Uh, but that's not one I really want to have like an emotion of. So I wonder, just wonder, if in our lesson today, we'll find out how to talk about anger and maybe forgiveness when someone's hurt us. I, I don't know. Well, hey, stay tuned because first, let's go find out what's up with Mr. Devante. What up, my bright Morians? I'm Devante, and we're gonna do our what's up. It's with God I can forgive others. All right, we're gonna do a competition, boys versus girls, who can do it the loudest? Well, let me, let me say it one more time. It's with God I can forgive others. Because sometimes without God, it's hard to forgive. But when we really put God into the equation, it makes it easier to put, the forgive, put that forgiveness on other people because he forgives us. Therefore, we have to forgive everybody else. All right, boys first. Boys, stand to your feet. You're gonna repeat after me on the count of three. I'll give you three seconds to stand. Three, two, one. With God, I can forgive others. Great job, guys. Now, let's have the ladies stand to your feet. Boys, you can sit down. Ladies, I'll give you three seconds to stand to your feet. You're gonna see if you can be even louder than the boys. Three, two, one. With God, I can forgive others. Great job, ladies. Now let's have everybody stand on up. Stand on up. I'll give you three seconds to stand on up. I say three seconds. Three. You're gonna repeat after me. Three, two, one. With God, I can forgive others. Great job, ladies and gents. That is our what's up. Hey kids, it's time for us to go over our memory verse. And I wanna hear you guys be nice and loud for this one. And we're gonna practice it and really commit this one to memory. I'm gonna read it first. It's found in Ephesians 6.18, and it says, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. All right, so we're gonna go over the verse and I want you guys to repeat after me. After I tell you guys to stand up, we're gonna do it three times. First in a normal voice, then we're gonna whisper, and then I want you guys to say the verse as loud as you can. Are you ready? Okay, so everyone stand up, stand up. I'll give you some time, I'll give you some time. Make sure everyone's on their feet, I'm watching. All right, so we're gonna go over the reverse with you guys repeating after me. Are you ready? And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Ephesians 6.18. All right, good job. Okay, so now we're gonna do it in a whisper. So I want you guys, we're all gonna whisper the verse. You guys, with you guys repeating after me. I wanna hear your best whispers. Okay, so repeat after me. And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Ephesians 6, 18. 
All right, those are some pretty good whispers, but now I want us to shake the room that you're in with how loud that you can be. So if you sat down in between there, stand back up, back on your feet, all together, we're gonna repeat, so I want you guys to repeat after me as loud as you can, and pray in the spirit. On all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Ephesians 6, 18. All right, great job, guys. You all may take a seat, return to your seats, and we're gonna continue on with our lesson. Quick, quick question for you guys. How many of you like some hot chocolate? Oh yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> on a cold day, there is nothing that warms you up like some hot chocolate. It just warms you all on the inside. It gets you feeling good and chocolatey. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm. Oh yeah, that's what I got right here. It smells good. But of course, you got to be careful with those first few sips. Uh, whenever you have hot chocolate, you, you realize that it can be really, really hot. You can let it sit and wait and wait and wait for it to cool, or you could do something to cool it off. You could actually take a couple of ice cubes and uh, dump them in there like, like this. Like just a little bit. A little more. Okay. Oh, yeah. Nicey, nicey. There you go. If it burns you after a few sips, you can actually dump more in there and it'll cool off. And this hot chocolate actually reminds me a lot of us because sometimes we need something to cool us off. When someone hurts our feelings or makes us mad or when we want to let off some steam and, you know, just give somebody a piece of our mind, God wants us to choose a different way. He wants us to forgive them and He wants us to pray for those who hurt us. That's they would know that God loves them. I know it's not easy, uh, but the next time somebody hurts you, remember the glass of ice. Remember it. Ask God to put a few ice cubes on your anger. Ask Him to give you a forgiving heart. And let's be people who forgive others just as God forgave us. One of the most colorful emojis on our phones is the angry emoji. Most of the emojis we know and love is the pleasant color of yellow, but not an angry face. No, the anger face is way too mad to stay yellow. When people are upset, their faces turn a dark, angry color. Even if he did not have the sore mouth and the angry eyes, we know something was up with his angry face just from his color. He is mad. He is furious. He is grumpy. He is not going to take it anymore. Anger is an emotion we have all expressed before we knew what the word emotion was. Babies get angry when they are hungry, wet, or lonely. We get angry when someone takes our toy. Little kids get mad when they get put in a crib for a nap, when they'd rather play. We get mad when they tell us we have to share our toys with our siblings. This is not right. This is not fair. We get angry and we want someone to fix it. Anger is the one emotion our parents try to help us control more than any other. But as you probably have noticed, most adults have trouble controlling their anger as well. If someone takes advantage of us, we get angry. If someone cuts us off in traffic, we get furious. We scream, we call names, we may say some very terrible things. We let our emotions take control. And we say things and do things that we would never do if we stopped to think. The thing about anger is that we often have a good reason to be angry. Someone has done something wrong and they hurt us. But does that mean it's okay for us to do something angry and hurtful to them in return? To answer this question, we are going to one of the most famous stories Jesus ever told. As Mr. Josh said, this is a really cool story. So please open up your Bibles to Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through 32 for the whole story of the prodigal son to hear about both sons and not just one. Starting in verse 11, it says this, Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger son said to the father, father, give me all of my inheritance, my shares of the estate. So the father divided the two properties, his property into two, and goes, here you go, son. Not long after that, the youngest son got together 
all he had and set off. Okay, this is my stuff. Bye. And went to a distant country where there he squandered, got rid of, used, used, wasted his wealth. After he had spent everything that there was, a severe famine came and the country began to have needs. So he went and hired himself to be in the fields to feed pigs because he was so poor. He longed to fill his stomach with pods that the pigs were eating food and no one gave him anything. It was because he wasted his money and then the famine came. When he came to his senses, the son said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to share and here I'm starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, father, I've sinned against heaven and against you and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and he went to his father. But while he was still a far way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son and threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, quick, quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate, woo woo. But meanwhile, the older son, that second son that stayed was in the field. And when he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants, hello, hey, come over here and asked him what was going on. Your brother, he, he's come, replied the servant. And your father has killed the fattened calf because he is come back safe and sound. The older brother became angry, red face emoji, ooh, and refused to go into the house. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But the son, the second son answered his father and said, look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never, never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, who was squandering away all he had and the properties that you gave him, you kill, him, a, kill a fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have, it's yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because of this brother of yours because he was dead and now he's alive again and he was lost and is found. And that's where Luke ends right there with this parable about the two sons. And what's beautiful about this is that God's grace is more than enough for all of us, both the younger son and the older son. But the older son, he got upset, right? He got really mad. There is a reason this is the one of the most beloved stories in the whole Bible. There is no one way just to look at this story. It has so many different things to teach us. For one thing, this is the story of God and us. We are the prodigals. We have rebelled against God with our sins. God is the father who welcomes us home when we have sinned. The parable reminds us that God is forgiving and will always forgive. But there are lessons we can learn from this story. One of the most important lessons is that we can choose how we respond to people who have hurt us. When the prodigal's brother saw that his father was about to throw a party for the returning son, he was unhappy. He became angry. He did not think throwing a party for the rebellious son was fair. His brother did wrong and he needed to be punished. The older brother was right about one thing. The prodigal son hurt his father when he left home and spent all his inheritance. But instead of being angry and holding a grudge, his 
Father forgave. That is precisely what God wants us to do when people hurt us. He wants us to pray for them. And He wants us to pray for a forgiving heart. God wants us to forgive those who have hurt us so that we will not be bitter. And maybe, just maybe, the one who hurts you can also know God's forgiveness. Forgiveness doesn't come easy, especially in the heat of the moment. If someone hits you and you hit back without thinking, if they call you a name and then you call them one back, tempers flare, anger burn, and soon you find yourself with one less friend. You might even end up in the principal's office depending on where and when it happens and how bad things get. God wants us to resist the impulse to strike back. He wants us to pause and to pray. That may mean getting away and it may take one more time to pray it through. When we have been hurt, we want to get even. We want someone to make things right. The last thing on our minds is to do anything good for the one who has hurt us. But what happens when we do pray for forgiveness? Well, first of all, the anger and the bitterness goes away. God gives us peace and he helps us let go of the pain. No, he can't erase it, but he can make us forget what was, so, what was said. But God can help us have peace. Second, when we are willing to forgive, we show them that Christians do not retaliate. We offer them what Christians are patient, kind, and loving. When we offer forgiveness to someone, we are showing God's forgiveness. We are a witness that we can point others to Jesus. I know it takes work. I know it's going to be complicated, but let us remember the first message of the parable. God forgave us. God always forgives us. And if God has forgiven us, who are we to refuse forgiveness to others? God has forgiven you. He chose to love you over anger and he sent Jesus to pay for your sins. Next time someone hurts you, don't strike back. Stop, pray, ask God to give you a forgiving heart. Let go of bitterness and show others how amazing the love of Christ is. Rewind review. So let's go over our previous our lesson that we just learned about and answer some questions. I hope you're following along. I hope you guys are getting them right. We got Mr. Josh versus Mr. Devante. You can go and pick a side or you can go against them yourselves. Whatever it is, I want to make sure you guys are answering along with us. Mm -hmm. Question number one: What did the son do when he lost all of his money? He ran back to his dad. That he did. He ran right back to his father. Qu next question. Why did the father forgive his son? <laughs> um, because he loved him. Again, two correct in a row. Now let's make sure I'm done reading the question though fully. Okay. Yeah. Fully before. Yeah. before so we really hit, those two didn't Before count. we hit the, bu mm -hmm. the buzzer. <clears throat> Why was the brother so unforgiving? Ha! Hesitant. <laughs> um, really, please repeat the question. <laughs> Why was the brother so unforgiving? To Mr. Oh. Bush? Because he saw that his brother ran away, did something bad, and then he came back and he was throwing this big party and all, this, all these things were given to him. So he was like, how come when I pay attention and do everything right, I don't get this big party? So he was a little jealous, mm -hmm. a little confused. Exactly, yeah. he was jealous of all the love that the father had shown the prodigal son after he had returned. Mm -hmm. All right, so it's two to one. Mm -hmm. Why does God want us to forgive people? He, yeah, finish I, okay, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry. Why? Mm, where'd the buzzer go? Such an interesting, there, there it is. Why does God want us to forgive people who hurt us? Because that's the right, because he forgives us. Mm -hmm. So we should forgive others. And we hurt God every time we sin and he still forgives us. So if somebody hurts us, 
If we want to be like Christ, we will forgive others. Mm. So true. It's such so a good true. answer. Okay, now we're tied, two to two. Is there someone who has hurt you that you need to forgive? Um, I mean, well, yeah, I had a friend the other day that um, oh. uh, was leaving, mm -hmm. and he didn't say goodbye. It made me sad. <gasps> but, oh. He had a hard day, so I think I have to give him grace and forgive him. There you go. Exactly what Jesus would want you to do in that situation. All right, next question. So now it's three to two. Mm. Fill in the blank. And wait for me to finish the complete sentence. Blank told a story about a young man who squandered his inheritance. Jesus. Exactly. Jesus told a story. All right, another fill in the blank. When the son ran out of money, he went home to ask for blank. For his inheritance. <laughs> forgiveness. For forgiveness. Forgiveness. Yes. I was confused. You started with the for, I thought you were going like, to be on the right track there. We, Josh got the right answer. <laughs> Pay attention, man. I, well, I, <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, another fill in the blank. The blank forgave his son. I hit it first, the uh, father. <laughs> yes, the father. Mm. Minus points for abuse to the buzz buzzer. Now we're tied. The blank <laughs> was not forgiving. My hand's under his, it, the brother. <laughs> it, the brother. <laughs> it, the brother right, we'll was score. not forgiving. I'm up by one. So, okay, last question. Winner takes all. God wants us to blank those who hurt us. Forgive. I'm sorry. If he had hmm. his hands over the buzzer and I couldn't get to it, right? does that sound fair to you? You know, like cheating at the end of the day, all that, what does it really matter? As long as we're all answering, yeah. having fun. As long fun. as we're having fun with each other, and I hope you guys are answering along as well. And what was our lesson about today? Anger, which I'm not gonna have. Right. Joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Mm -hmm. We walk in the forgiveness of the Lord, even when those wrong us, those right. that we love. Okay, have a great week. Hey, Brightmore kids, that is it. Like, the lesson is over. I wanna encourage you, instead of getting mad, instead of getting angry, instead of letting your rage boil over, remember to pray and ask God to put some ice cubes on top of that rage through his Holy Spirit. And we will see you soon. Love you. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.